I'm going to talk to you about how math can save the day. And you might ask yourself, why does the day need saving? Well, the day needs saving because hackers today are exploiting systems, and they're very successful at this. If you think about Target, Home Depot, uh, Anthem Insurance, all these sites have been hacked, and the hackers are stealing personal information from these servers and from the databases. I want to focus in on one in particular, the Office of Personnel and Management, known as OPM. You may not be familiar with OPM, but if you apply for a security clearance with the US government, you'll know about OPM, because that's the, the part of the government that collects the information when they're trying to decide if somebody should be given a security clearance, like top secret. So they collect all kinds of really important, valuable information about people, and they got hacked. Millions of records about people's personal information were stolen. And so the day needs to be saved, and math is going to do it. And the question is, how do we protect this information? And the answer is that we're going to encrypt it. And by encrypt it, I mean that we're going to perform a transformation on the data in the databases using a secret key that will result in something unreadable to an attacker. And then we decrypt it with the same secret key. And that way, if a database gets hacked and the information is encrypted in the database, then the attackers don't get that private information. However, there's a challenge, because I said we're going to use a secret key. And where are we going to get that key from? Let's imagine a scenario where you want to buy a song on iTunes. Okay, So you're at your computer, and you want to send your credit card over to iTunes, over the internet. We all know that the internet is full of attackers, eavesdroppers, hackers. And so I'm posing a problem to you. You're over here, you have your credit card number, iTunes server is over here, and the eavesdropper is going to hear every communication between you. How do you and the iTunes server establish a secret key to communicate with an eavesdropper seeing everything? It seems impossible, but math will save the day. So let me start off simply and say, I'm going to use some colors to illustrate the concept, and then I'll plug in some formulas and some math. So we start out with some public information, a generator and a prime. These are going to go into blue dots. And we say that the eavesdropper knows this information as well. And then you and the iTunes server are each going to generate a secret. So you know the yellow key, and the iTunes server knows the red key. You generate the secret, and you keep it to yourself so the eavesdroppers on the internet don't know it. And now what we're going to do is each side is going to combine their secret information with the public information. And in the case of colors, the blue and yellow results in green, and the red and um, blue results in purple. And they're going to exchange that information. And what happens is the eavesdropper also gets to see those combinations. But the eavesdropper does not have its own secret. And it doesn't know the two secrets that you and the iTunes server have. And so it can't combine a secret with the part that was made public. And you and the iTunes server can do that. So you take your yellow secret, and you combine it with the purple you received from the iTunes server, and you get brown. And the iTunes server takes the green part that it got from you and combines it with its red secret and also gets brown. And lo and behold, both of you now know brown, but the eavesdropper can't produce brown. Okay? Well, in practice, we're going to use math, and we're going to use numbers. And so the way it works is that the public information is a number G, which is a generator in a particular number field, and a P, which is a prime. We all know primes. These are numbers that you can't divide by anything except themselves in one. And they have certain mathematical properties that make this work. And so what you do is you take your secret, let's call it X, and you, per you perform the computation G to the X mod P. What does that mean? It means you multiply g by itself x times, and you take the remainder when you divide by p. And then on the other side, the iTunes server takes y, multiplies it by itself, uh, multiplies g by itself y times, and takes the remainder divided by p. So these are pretty simple calculations. They exchange that information. And then when you receive g to the y mod p from the iTunes server, you raise that to the x, meaning you multiply that result by itself x times, divide by p and take the remainder. And so if you plug numbers into this, really, really simple numbers, you can see like if we're using 3 and 7 as the generator and the prime, 
And if we're using three as your secret, and we're using four as the secret of the iTunes server, we can plug and chug, we call it. We plug it into these formulas, and in the end, we see that we get the number one. And so amazingly, you and the iTunes server can both calculate a number, the number one, without an eavesdropper who saw every single message passing between you and has unlimited computational power being able to know this secret. So in practice, we're not going to use three and seven. We're going to use digits that are hundreds of digits long, right? We're going to take huge numbers, and these calculations can take a little bit of time on a computer. Maybe 10 years ago, it would take a few seconds, but today it's almost instantaneous. And so I find it fascinating, hopefully you do too, that you can use math to exchange secrets that you can use to encrypt information in databases to protect you if you get hacked. Now, why is this important? Because this can lead to money and jobs. And you can do this kind of math, you're going to be in very, very high demand in the future, and you're never going to be bored because this stuff is fascinating. Trust me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Albi. That was amazing. I have one question for you. Sure. What do you think will be the biggest security threat of the future? The biggest security threat of the future? Um, right now, I think we have a big problem with software. Mm -hmm. um, I have a smartwatch. I have the Apple Watch. There is more software in my Apple Watch than there was computational power when I was in graduate school in the world. And so the more software that you have, the more bugs there are going to be in the software, the more malware, malicious software, will be able to take advantage of it and allow hackers to break into systems, which is why we're seeing all of these hacks in the news all of the time. Wow. Well, that's pretty scary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>